Today, we will be chatting with Jamie Burse, CEO and spokesperson for Zero, the end of prostate cancer organization. Zero is the leading national nonprofit with the mission to end prostate cancer by advancing research, improving the lives of men and families, and inspiring action. You'll want to listen in because we'll be learning more about the various programs Zero offers, including but not limited to the Zero 360 Navigator program for access to financial resources and learning how to cut through insurance and Medicare red tape. So stay tuned. So the big question is this, how can men and those who care for them better educate themselves regarding prostate health, the conditions that affect the prostate, and the latest technology in managing these conditions? That is the question, and this podcast will provide the answers. On a weekly basis, we'll be chatting with experts, innovators, and leaders in the field of urology, sharing useful information with the general public to improve their lives and increase their overall health. My name is Dr. Garrett Pullman, and welcome to the Prostate Health Podcast. Prostate Health Podcast is for informational purposes only. Nothing in this podcast should be construed as medical advice. By listening to the podcast, no physician-patient relationship has been formed. For more information and counseling, you must contact your personal physician or urologist with questions about your unique situation. It is my pleasure to welcome Jamie Burst to the Prostate Health Podcast today. Jamie is CEO of Zero, the End of Prostate Cancer Organization. During the last 15 years at Zero, there isn't a job he hasn't done. He started the Zero Prostate Cancer Run Walk and Endurance Team in 2008 and Zero's Copay Support Program in 2013. During his tenure at Zero, the organization has raised over $100 million for the cause, recruited celebrity spokesmen, including Rudy Giuliani and Ken Griffey Sr., to educate men and their families. Jamie, Welcome to the Prostate Health Podcast. Thanks, Gary. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate being here and talking about uh, prostate cancer and being able to help patients and families together. Jamie, could you first of all share with our listeners a bit about Zero's story? Sure, I'd be happy to. Our mission is right there in our name. We're there to end prostate cancer, and we do that by advancing research, encouraging action, and providing education and support to men and their families. As far as zero story goes, we used to be called an organization that was named the National Prostate Cancer Coalition. And in 2008, we really became a new organization. And that's where we not only changed our name, but we launched a Run Walk series, as you just mentioned, and using that Run Walk series to get into communities across the country. So it's important to meet people where they are. And we're proud that over the last 12 years, we've grown from having just one of those run walks to over 40 now is what we have planned for this year. And along the way, we've enhanced that even more by building chapters across the country in different areas where we have staff that are in the communities working with patients, survivors, caretakers, and medical professionals in order to be able to advance the cause and execute on programs to be able to help patients and their families. So it's been a really exciting decade, I would say, because working in the cause for as long as I have, it's sort of been um, working alongside with great folks like you, that it's like, it feels like sometimes like we've been pushing this boulder up the hill to create prostate cancer awareness and momentum for people to take action against the disease. And now it feels like at least we're on sort of like level ground with this boulder and maybe even really being able to build momentum in a way that... We're not quite there yet, but maybe, you know, be able to build this momentum that has been done so well with the breast cancer movement starting, you know, years ago. That's great. And appreciate you sharing the story. So as a practicing urologist, I've certainly been impressed with the Zero organization. I've been able to bring Zero's resources into our clinic to offer to our patients. Today, I'm excited to sit down with you and just have a conversation about the many resources that Zero offers patients and caregivers. Now, one of these programs is the Zero 360 degree Navigator program. Can you share with our audience how it can help in navigating the prostate cancer journey? Absolutely happy to. It's one of our most proud programs that we have within the organization, and this is how it works. Any prostate cancer patient, no matter where you live, no matter you know what you make, or no matter what your job is, you can call in and get free and confidential help from our patient navigators. And what they specialize in, you may go and see a urologist or you may see an oncologist or go to the hospital and you may talk to the nurses and they may set you up with a, with a navigator that will help you make some determinations on what your treatment pathway might be 
in order to have the best fighting chance against your prostate cancer situation. However, our navigators are able to get involved in the financial aspects of fighting the disease, which is really just as toxic as fighting prostate cancer itself. I've seen some studies that cancer patients, about 40% of the time, end up either cutting down their treatments or just stopping their treatments altogether because of uh, financial concerns. But our patient navigators through the 0360 program help out prostate cancer patients in a way. Let me give you some examples. If someone is unable to meet their copay demands on some of these later stage prostate cancer treatments, which can be expensive when it comes to copay contributions toward it, our nurse navigators and patient navigators can step in and help find solutions whether it's community-based or national-based or going back to industry and making a case for getting that covered. Another example is sometimes insurance companies will reject the insurance claim because the treatment, like a urologist or an oncologist would prescribe, might not fit exactly into the treatment regimen that the insurance company would see it as. So the patient navigator would get on the phone with the insurance company and be able to negotiate that out and find a way to make sure that the insurance company covers their share of what they're supposed to in order for the patient to continue his journey with prostate cancer. A few other shorter examples would include if a patient is demonstrating need that he and his family are struggling to stay in their home while battling prostate cancer, a patient navigator will call their mortgage company and be able to negotiate you know, a better rate or be able to postpone payments for a certain amount of time. We've certainly seen that happen in order to keep guys who are fighting prostate cancer, keep a roof over their head and their family's head. I know that that would um, certainly create quite a quandary in someone's mind who is fighting cancer and being forced to you know, have to move out of your house to do so. And then other things like being able to find transportation to the doctor's office. There are many, many places, rural parts of the country in which uh, it takes a long time to get to the doctor's office, and some patients don't have the means to continue to do that, especially when we're looking at treatments like radiation, where you have to go in every day for a period of weeks. So that can be quite costly and cumbersome to do that. So that's another area in which we help out. And So again, receiving a new prostate cancer diagnosis can be terrifying, not only for men, but their caregivers as well. Having a good support network can have numerous benefits, including reducing anxiety, providing reassurance, and providing a positive outlook. While family and friends are wonderful, they may not always completely understand what you're going through. The good news is that there is help for both men and their caregivers, and that is with support groups. Can you tell us a bit about Zero Connect? Sure, absolutely. Zero Connect is a Facebook-based group that we have. That's a closed group for patients and survivors and caregivers and loved ones to, just as you said, to connect with one another, to be able to share their experience, strength, and hope around their prostate cancer journey in a way that they can, others are able to jump in and say like, you know, I went through the same thing, or my husband went through this, or here was my experience, or here's something that maybe you should think about or ask your doctor as you continue to go through it because That's something that a family member or the patient, another patient has has gone through. So it's a great way for the prostate cancer community to really come together. And it's um, a program that we offer that we're, from a staff perspective, we're really hands off on it and just really let patients, survivors, family members, caregivers really own that site all to themselves with really little oversight from us other than the, the occasional people that everybody has that comes in that tries to like sell something silly. So we zap those out, but we really try to foster um, real authentic conversations and discussions with folks in the prostate cancer community so they can start to really get the support that they need online, no matter where they are around the globe. Well, that's wonderful that you've created that platform for patients and their families. I'm sure that's just been a wonderful resource for them. We're gonna take a quick break here Then we'll be right back for more great information from Jimmy Burse. Thanks again for joining us today on the Prostate Health Podcast. Now, do you have an upcoming appointment at the urologist office? Maybe you're scheduled for a biopsy of your prostate or just received the news 
that your biopsy was positive for prostate cancer and now have an upcoming consultation to discuss options with your urologist. You may be wondering, how should I prepare for these appointments and what should I expect? Well, I've partnered with the Prostate Health Academy to create a free what to expect guide that will help get you up to speed as you prepare for your visits. This guide includes checklists of what you need to bring and how to prepare. This guide includes what to expect with three different scenarios, including your initial urology clinic appointment, a prostate biopsy, and prostate cancer consultation. To receive this free guide, simply go to www.prostatehealthpodcast.com forward slash clinic. Again, that's www.prostatehealthpodcast.com forward slash clinic, or you can find the link on our podcast website at prostatehealthpodcast.com. So now Zero is also very active in advocating on behalf of men and their families to ensure that the, the government directs resources to prostate cancer. Can you share with our listeners about some of the initiatives Zero is leading on the state and federal level for prostate cancer. Sure, I'd be happy to. It's actually one of the pillars on why Zero was started to begin with, which was to protect and grow prostate cancer research funding. When we look back into the 90s, the Coleman Foundation and others were instrumental in creating a mechanism within, let me say this, that a lot of people out there don't know that the Department of Defense plays a significant role in the war on cancer, but it does. The DOD has a very critical role in the war on cancer. And where it started was breast cancer research funding started to be done or started to be funded out of the Department of Defense through a program that they had created called the Congressionally Directed Medical Research Program. And recognizing some of the success that was getting generated through breast cancer funding at the Department of Defense one of the reasons why Zero was founded in the mid to late 90s was to do what had been done so well for breast cancer, and that was to start up a prostate cancer research program within the Department of Defense. So over the last 25 years now, there's been uh, hundreds of millions of dollars that have been filtered into institutions, uh, academic institutions, medical institutions all around the country to be able to fund prostate cancer research. And through our amazing advocates that we bring to Capitol Hill every year through an event that we call our Zero Prostate Cancer Summit, where we have hundreds of advocates come from all around the country to talk to their elected officials with the aim of trying to recruit those elected officials to be champions for the cause and to make prostate cancer research a federal priority has been extremely successful because over the last eight years now, there have been four new treatments for advanced prostate cancer that have come directly out of that funding from the prostate cancer research program, as well as a tool to be able to better diagnose the disease, to let patients and doctors know what treatments may work on them and what treatments may not work on them. So it shortens the pathway to hopefully a a better health outcome for the patient without having to go through the guessing game or the trial and error game of, well, let's try this treatment because it might work. But now we've got that tool to be able to give us a better idea if uh, that treatment will work or not before administering it. So that's the federal side. And then uh, on the state side, actually some exciting news on the state side right now is just so people know, and I'm sure that many of your listeners tune into every episode that you do, Garrett, but just to remind people, it's also it's helpful to say this over and over and over again so people know it. 99% survive when prostate cancer is caught early, right? Yep, yep, early yep. detection is the key. Early detection is the key. It's what you do with that information after you go through your prostate, your initial prostate cancer screening. Well, of course, we don't want you know folks to go through unnecessary treatment, but we want to have those folks go through the appropriate treatment so they have, as we just talked about, great health outcomes. So to that end, we are going state by state and setting up a mandate that says that a guy between the ages of 40 and 75 who would like to get tested for prostate cancer should get tested without any cost sharing involved. There's no cost to the patient in order to be able to have that done. So right now, and actually we just recently, within the last few weeks here, had the state of Maryland pass a bill that requires no cost sharing from any guy in the entire state between the ages of 40 and 75 who would like to get tested for prostate cancer, no matter family history or anything like that, to be able to get that test. So it really helps reduce 
the barriers that guys like us have when it comes to taking care of our own health. I've been saying for years that any excuse is a good excuse for a guy not to go to the doctor. And sometimes you see a guy in the doctor's office, sometimes you'll see their loved one standing behind them with a two by four because they've dragged them to the doctor to make sure that they get the, the checkup or the treatment that they need. So this gets rid of that excuse of like, oh, well, I don't really have the funds to be able to go get screened. So that's what we're doing. We're going state by state. Maryland's number two. New York has already happened. And looking ahead in terms of state advocacy work, our sites are set on going to Illinois next and getting that done, then California, perhaps New Jersey, and then hopefully using those states for other states to fall like dominoes in order to be able to get cost sharing when it comes to prostate cancer testing eliminated so we can try to save more lives through early detection. Well, you're doing some amazing work there, so we appreciate that. So our urology group is excited as we begin some of the initial planning in bringing a zero run walk to our community to help increase awareness for prostate cancer, but not only that, educate the community about the disease and raise money to fight it. Now, how might our listeners find out more about zero activities in their area, as well as how else they may be able to help support Zero's mission? Sure. Absolutely. You can learn more about Zero and about prostate cancer at our website, which is zerocancer.org. You can also go onto Facebook, which is obviously facebook.com slash zero cancer. So you can join us on there. We, we do, we run many videos and podcasts like this, as well as uh, live videos with members of our medical advisory board to educate men more about prostate cancer. And if they would like to get involved, they can also do that through our website. We actually have a match campaign going on right now to be able to support the organization and be able to help more of the patients like I talked about through great programs like Zero360. So you know, a donation or a contribution, no matter how small, is incredibly helpful and a life changer for these guys who are going through their prostate cancer journey. But there are also links on that website to be able to get involved in a local run walk like you had mentioned or also look into our mentor program. Uh, one of the things that we hadn't touched on, which is um, we have a mentor program that we take prostate cancer patients and survivors who have had specific experiences, and we train them to be mentors to those who are newly diagnosed or new to us as an organization and match them up based off of what are some of the issues or what are some of the, the problems or the concerns that an incoming patient has. Like if a patient who's new to us wants to talk about erectile dysfunction, or they want to talk about depression, or they want to talk about you know, treatment outcomes of how prostate cancer is affecting their bones, then we've got a mentor for them to be able to connect them no matter where they are around the country so they can really build that bond and have like a one-on-one -on -one connection, which is something that uh, I don't think you find too often in the prostate cancer uh, community in, in terms of meeting that, that patient need. So all that is available, you know, again, on our website at zerocancer.org. So in summary, it is easy to see why Zero is the leading national nonprofit with the mission to end prostate cancer by advancing research, improving the lives of men and families, and inspiring action. So any final thoughts for our listeners regarding Zero today? Well, we'd love to get people involved and make them become an advocate and feel like they're part of the Zero family. As we build this movement, one of uh, what we call really our Uber advocates or Uber supporters are Zero champions. And a Zero champion means that you really do anything to be able to help end prostate cancer. And I'm so proud of the hundreds of Zero champions that we have who are part of that community. When it comes to our champions, or is really a zero family, and we all get to know each other, no matter whether we're on staff or the board of directors or a supporter or a patient or a survivor, you're really part of that family. And it takes that close-knit family and that passion, that shared passion to end prostate cancer. And that's what it's gonna take in order to be able to end the disease and stop the pain and suffering around this disease. So we invite everybody to come in and get to know us and be part of the Zero family and, and join the movement. Well, Jamie, we really appreciate you taking time today to really you know, just join us on the Prostate Health Podcast and chat about your organization's uh, resources for those that uh, are affected by prostate cancer. I think you've really given our listeners a lot of valuable information today regarding the resources that Zero has to offer. So thank you again. 
Thanks for having me, Garrett. I really appreciate it. And thanks for all you do to helping patients both in your clinic and then also putting on this podcast to inform them with the best information possible. Thanks, Garrett. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Thank you again for listening to the Prostate Health Podcast. We would love to have you join our podcast Facebook group at www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash prostate health podcast or just use the Facebook group search function and search for the prostate health podcast and ask to join. We'll see you at the next episode.